I started out as a web designer in the early 2000s. And as time went on, I started to see these roles for UX and UI designer and product designer crop up more and more. And I started to wonder, is what I'm doing the same as that? Although they share some core skills, it turns out they're very different roles with very different responsibilities. One of my biggest pieces of advice and something that I see new designers doing all the time is they confuse web design work with UI UX and product design work in their portfolios. Sometimes designers will post landing pages on Twitter or in their portfolio and call them UI designs, but that's not really as accurate and someone looking for a product designer might not see the relevancy of your work in your portfolio if you have a bunch of websites and landing pages in there. So a simple shorthand that I came up with to understand the difference is simply that a web designer usually designs everything that comes before the login screen and a UX UI or product designer designs everything that comes after the login screen. Here's an example of a website that a web designer would create. It's a marketing website website, it's got landing pages, sales pages, about pages, features, pricing, information about the company, service, or product. And then this is a web app or a mobile app or software application that a product designer would create. And this consists of flows, components, interactions that a customer or a user would need to solve a problem or complete a task. So my advice is be targeted and relevant with the work that you put in your portfolios and your UX case studies. For a web designer, you're gonna to wanna to do lots of web design work. That's landing pages, sales pages, sales funnel designs, etc. And then if you wanna be a product designer, you need more in-depth UX case studies that show your design process, your interviewing skills, your prototyping skills, etc. Now let's go through what that means in practicality and how exactly Exactly these two roles and responsibilities are different. The first is static versus dynamic. Websites are more static. Visitors are mostly just reading, clicking, viewing information, navigating around a little bit, maybe filling out a form or two. With websites, you're designing landing pages, squeeze pages, marketing sites, informational sites. That's pretty much the extent of the functionality that happens on a website. There's not much other interaction between the website and the user. There might be a higher level of information architecture depending on if it's a e-commerce website, and that's a little bit of a gray area. There might be some more ontology, filters, or maybe even more complex site maps apps and information architecture depending on how big the site is. And you might find a lot of cool page transitions and animations as well. But overall, there's a minimal user interaction that affects the overall design of the site. Them inputting their data doesn't change things very much or require much feedback from the system. Digital products, apps and software, on the other hand, are dynamic. Here, we're talking about things like SaaS applications, mobile apps, native software. This might be for a fit tech product such as a digital wallet or maybe a healthcare app. This deals with far more permutations of design components, of atomic design principles, of user flows. It takes a lot more user research and user feedback because the users here are trying to solve problems with this app or perform specific tasks. There are lots of conditionals and causes and reactions for everything that happens of how the users interact with the visuals and the visuals interact with the system. Responsive design versus device-based design. In web design, the layout and visual principles have to take into consideration how they'll be represented inside of a responsive or adaptive layout in the browser. This means thinking about how it will be implemented in code in things like Flexbox or CSS grids or masonry. Products are usually designed around our devices. That could be our phones in many different sizes. That could be on iOS, on Apple devices, Devices or on Android devices. This could be software on our tablets, or it can even be an app on our Apple watches. So one single application might have very different representations depending on the different device that it's being displayed on. So the takeaway here is that web designers focus more on browsers and product designers focus more on devices. Next is revision versus iteration. 
When it comes to web design, it's all about the revision game. You're usually going to be looking at the client brief, doing some competitive research, maybe doing some branding, even a little bit of graphic design work, perhaps some wireframes, and then presenting a few variations to your client or the company, and then making revisions based on that, which are small changes that will eventually lead to the final website design. When it comes to product design, it's all about the iteration game. You'll be adding features and updates and making changes incrementally over time in a continuous, never-ending process. The takeaway here is that the definition of done in website design is quite a bit different than that of a product designer. Funnels versus flows. Websites are usually the start of a sales funnel. It's where you're presenting a product, telling the story about its features or the outcome that this product could give to the users. You're trying to lead the user to making a decision about signing up for this product or service. The product is where you actually have to deliver on that promise. This is where the actual tasks have to be smoothly orchestrated and every single step of the user journey and interaction has to be considered. So the takeaway here is that the website makes a promise and the product delivers on that promise. Creative thinking versus critical thinking. As a web designer, you'll spend a lot of time generating creative ideas, coming up with different layouts, different color schemes, different imagery and graphics. You're telling a visual story and you're trying to get them to take a single action. With product design, there are any number of things that you can do, but the real skill of a product designer is figuring out what you should do. And that requires a lot of research and testing and validating things along the way. Your job as a product designer is often to come up with more constraints rather than trying to ideate on many different creative possibilities. So the takeaway here is that web designers engage in more generative concept creation while product designers engage in more iterative solution validation. Briefs versus problem statements. Companies and clients that hire web designers usually have a project brief that consists of pages, outlines content, has a time frame, and different needs for the website. Companies and organizations that need a product designer usually have a problem statement, or they may be trying to uncover problems that users might have and then test possible solutions in the forms of prototypes that need to be made or user studies that need to be created. This can include things like how might we statements, jobs to be done, user journeys, and task analyses. So the takeaway here is that a lot of web design projects tend to be top down, while product design projects tend to be bottom up. Copywriting versus UX writing. With websites, we are usually using words in a more salesy way to sell the value or the unique value proposition behind the product or feature. We're trying to tell a convincing story to a prospective customer or user about why they should adopt this product or give it a try. Copywriting tends to lean more towards the marketing style writing and creative style writing. With product design, we're using UX writing to explain things in a very simple, practical way. We're trying to guide the user through a step-by-step -step process so they know what to expect, what to do, and the process of completing a task. UX writing leans more to the side of technical writing, but with a much more human touch. The takeaway here is that copywriting in web design is much more about selling, and UX writing in product design is more about guidance. To code or not to code. During my time as a web designer, there were many times when I really needed to change a little bit of CSS and HTML. So I taught myself front-end coding and it made my job so much easier. Now with so many no-code tools and CMS solutions, you don't really need to know how to code in order to be a web designer. But I still tend to see more job descriptions that have that expectation that a web designer does understand front-end language, at least at its basic elements. As a product designer, I have never been asked to write code. This isn't really part of the work that we're doing as product designers, so it's not something you have to worry about in that area. I will caveat that with the fact that knowing front-end HTML and CSS has really helped me communicate better with my engineering team and when working on 
technically heavy products. So the takeaway here is that web designers will have more exposure to front end code and product designers probably won't. Marketing team versus product team. Web designers usually find their home on the marketing or sales team inside a company or organization, whereas product designers more often find themselves on the UX, the UI, or the product team inside of a company. So how do you know if you should become a web designer or a product designer? Well, that all depends on what you're most inclined to do. If you're interested in web design, you'll need to focus on learning things like visual and graphic design, color theory, typography, proportion and layout, no code tools and CMS site builders like WordPress, Webflow or Squarespace, bootstrap framework, responsive and adaptive design, sales funnels, storytelling, marketing, copywriting, browser requirements. If you want to become a product designer, then you should focus your time learning things like user research, user flows, component design, atomic design principles, interaction design, prototype information architecture, business metrics, and product management. Web designers can make the most working for a web design agency or working for themselves as a freelancer and working with clients. Ideally, you'll enjoy working with a variety of clients and on different projects. Usually these happen in shorter timeframes with shorter deadlines. Product designers can make the most working for startups or larger companies. You'll ideally enjoy working on the same projects or features for a longer term, being in a very highly collaborative environment with other people that are invested in the design of this product. So I hope this video finally clears up a lot of the confusion for you. And I definitely hope that if you want to get into product design, you will check out our amazing course. The link is in the description.